Oh, hello there. I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry, you've uh, just caught me playing about with this ring that I got in the mail a couple of days ago. One day you sent it to me. Oh well. Let's move straight on to today's topic. I just need to find out what it is. Ah, Batman, Mask of the Phantasm. Good choice! Released in 1993, Mask of the Phantasm retells the origin of the Dark Knight in flashback. While in the present, Batman investigates a deadly doppelganger with a hit list of monsters. Spinning out of the Emmy Award winning animated series, this was the first of three feature length adventures for Gotham's Guardian, which would see him battle Mr. Freeze and even a mysterious Batwoman. So, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, and variations thereupon, I give you Batman, Mask of the Phantasm. Another night in the original city of crime, Gotham. A bunch of mobsters have the latest in counterfeit money. But as ever, they didn't reckon on your distinctly unfriendly neighbourhood Batman. The boss, one Chucky Soul, is quick enough to escape. But it isn't the Batman that he must worry about. This is our villain. The Phantasm. Who are they? What are they? And why would they target a random mobster? Sol attempts to run down his assailant, but fatally fails. And the bat gets the blame. On the social front, a mysterious redhead swishes her way into Gotham society. This is Andrea Beaumont, one of Bruce Wayne's many, many old flames. Meanwhile, another gangster, one Buzz Bronski is cornered by the Phantasm. Bronski puts up a spirited defence, but you can't escape the Angel of Death. Ironic death number 127, if I know my tropes right. The next day, Batman sets out to investigate for himself. That night, Batman, spying on Andrea's date, thinks back to how it all began. And now... The flashback portion of this movie, brought to you in glorious flashback o vision Young Bruce Wayne made a vow. He and Andrea met in the graveyard, and seemed quite fond of each other. Even as Bruce walked the campus of Gotham U, he took his first steps in crime fighting. That night, as a fighting force, Bruce was formidable. As a walking nightmare? Not so much. Andrea's father dealt with some very shady characters. And Bruce's mission was always somewhere in his thoughts. Torn between love and duty, Bruce tried to reason with his parents' tombstone. And Andrea Beaumont was reason enough. Reason enough that they were soon betrothed. For all of a day or so. As Andrea swiftly and mysteriously left that night, breaking off the engagement. But why? Thus was born the Batman. And all evil did shudder in the night. We now return you to your regularly scheduled present day, already in progress. Continuing the investigation, Batman heads to gang boss Sal Valestra's hideout and discovers something unsettling. Valestra ran a bunch of fake companies alongside Sol and Bronski, but how is Andrea's father involved? Meanwhile, Valestra meets the Joker at the Old World's Fair. Unsurprisingly, the Clown Prince of Crazy is unfazed by the possibility that Batman has turned to more permanent solutions. But this conversation will cost Valestra dear, as the Phantasm finds out when she goes to end him. Yes, Andrea Beaumont is the Phantasm. But what did she know about her father's shady business? A terrible truth is also revealed. Well, the Joker wasn't always the mirthful maniac he is today. Once, he was merely an enforcer, working under Valestra. Speaking of Mr. J, he makes an appointment with Councilman Reeves. Which goes about how you'd expect it to. Before he was Councilman Reeves, Arthur Reeves used to work for Beaumont. And after mysteriously disappearing, Beaumont kept in touch. And while Joker Toxin can be combated with enough sedative, 
a stressful encounter with the Batman would raise anyone's heart rate. Now, it's not actually implied that he dies as a result of the Joker toxin, but after Batman's visit, he certainly doesn't have such a nice time of it. And so the stage is set for our finale. The Phantasm battles the Joker at the Ruined World's Fair. Okay, let's get to the bottom of this. The story behind this whole deal is that Andrea's father borrowed money from Valestra, which is a bad enough idea in itself, but worse was to come. But the murderous master of mirth always has another trick up his sleeve. But the Dark Knight appears just in time. And another terrible truth is revealed. So when Valestra was getting tired of delayed repayment, Papa Beaumont begged 24 more hours, which he used to skip town. Which went as well as you'd expect, because thanks to Reeves selling out his former employer in exchange for campaign funds, they found and killed him. Andrea wasn't there at the time, and only discovered the crime later. Thus, Andrea Beaumont dedicated herself to a roaring rampage of revenge. But the Joker intends to have the last laugh. Because he doesn't care about any of this, and only seeks to kill Batman for yucks. Thus, he's packed the tunnels under the World's Fair with explosives, and set a five minute timer. Until he's thwarted at the last minute, that is. Andrea will have her revenge, even at the cost of her own life. And so our movie ends with Batman, Gotham's eternal protector, watching over his first love, the city. So that was Batman, Mask of the Phantasm. And come on, this is from the stable that brought us Batman the Animated Series. Of course I'm going to put it into the House of Love. So often spin-off movies feel like overlong episodes of the TV show they're based on. So you could say of this movie. Then again, given that this movie is a spin-off of an award-winning animated series, this is no bad thing. And, at a positively anorexic 73 minutes, it doesn't outstay its welcome. This is a much glossed over part of the Batman mythos. A glimpse of what might have been if Bruce had chosen love over vengeance. And, much as I love Transformers the movie, Transformers the movie is all spectacle. An epic battle against the Planet Eater. Batman Mask of the Phantasm is more a personal story. A tale of love, loss, betrayal and vengeance. All wrapped up in the cape of the best screen Batman there ever was. At least in my opinion. So then, if I am taken from this earth before I get the chance to make any more videos, I'd like to thank all of my viewers, old and new, for choosing my little house of love over an endless sprawl of hate. Otherwise, I'll be back in a few months with an all new series of House of Love, featuring more fun, more frolics, and maybe even some real Legionnaire action. But for now, I've got to see exactly what this ring does. Oh well, might as well get to it. So long, folks. Thanks again for watching, I hope that you've enjoyed these remasters as much as I've enjoyed making them. Don't forget to check out Season 2, which should be linked right here. So long, folks!